Well, first of all, I am Kimberly Wilson, and I am so excited, honored, and humbled to um, be interviewing you this evening and congratulating you again for the Carl Perkins Community Service Award. Um, and um, we're just going to let everyone get to know you just a little better and hear a little more about who you are. All right? Sounds great. All right. Sounds good. So, Robbie, I'm going to go ahead and start um, with our question number one. And then we'll just have some fun and have a little chat and make it happen, okay? Sounds good. All right. So tell us a little about your background and how you became involved in career and technical education. Absolutely. So um, I took my first CET class as a ninth grader um, at Fort Gibson Public Schools in Oklahoma. And I was in agriculture education for all four years um, of high school and had a great experience, had amazing three ag teachers that really mentored me and took me under their wing. And so when I graduated from high school, that was a passion that I wanted to do and um, served as a state FFA officer in, in our CT organization. And um, that was a great experience. And that pushed me to this path. And, and that's what I've been on ever since. This is my 11th year of teaching ag. And I feel like we have a little more fun every single year. <laughs> Sounds great. So as you know, as we have, you know, discovered about you and, and learned about you, um, I just think that it's really um, great for our community just to um, learn about some of the community services that you've done. So with that being said, tell us about some of the community service projects um, that your students have been involved in. And then we're going to follow up with where did you get your um, get these ideas from? Were the ideas that you came up with or are they ideas that were sparked from your students that you just kind of helped push along? Absolutely. So um, most of our activities are very infused in classroom learning. Service learning is very important to us here. We think students can learn skills that they can use in the workforce, but they can also use them in the short term now to make a difference in their community. And so one of my favorite activities that's fresh in my mind right now is our $5 challenge. And so every single freshman in my class are given a $5 bill. And there's not a whole lot of parameters on this. They take that $5, they have all semester to make the greatest impact on their community. And the only rule is that you cannot spend more than the $5 given to you. And the goal is to show students that you know no one is too poor, busy, or, or insignificant, if you will, to make a difference, because we often want to make excuses. Um, and so um, these students go out and they do that. And so I had a great, a great reminder of that this week. I had a student um, who was given his $5 bill, and he created a GoFundMe, and he used that $5 for marketing. And he raised over $1,000 from community members, presented it to our school nutritional department, and they used that to pay off lunch bills for students who were struggling to pay their school meal debts. And so that's a great example of a student taking that and running with that. Um, that idea actually came from another ag teacher um, that I had read in an agriculture education magazine a decade earlier, my first year of teaching. And of course, we know all teachers, all good teachers are the best thieves. And, and I couldn't tell you that teacher's name, but I've stolen that idea and I have hundreds of students that have done that project since. And so, you know, that's one of my favorite activities. Um, that we've done. Another one that we do through our organizations was student-led, and it was our Cans for Community 5K race. And through this activity, um, it's a normal 5K race, but instead of paying money, you pay 20 canned food items. They go to the Salvation Army for Thanksgiving baskets. In the last six years, we've raised over 24,000 canned food items, um, roughly 4,000 canned food items a year. And that is actually a student came up with that idea um, each year, we, um, I select a student race director who works with me and does a lot of this stuff up front. And so I think it's important as teachers and that type of activity to take a back seat and let students really take charge. Yes, I think that those are so amazing. I really like the one where you talked about the five dollars, right? I mean, you know, students really learning how to um, maximize a dollar, right? And Absolutely. make it make it count where it needs to count. And so that's that's really awesome. So, you know, we we know that um, as time moves on, we are evolving from a pandemic and, you know, we're getting back into um, a norm, if you would say. And so um, our next question is this. How has your community um, service enhanced your students learning in the classroom? How has your community service participation changed since the pandemic? Okay. 
Um, so everything we teach, I hope, is 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 tied to quality standards. And so as ag teachers or any instructor, right, we create lesson plans and we have certain standards we're trying to teach students. And so um, that ties to it. Um, now, when you talk about the pandemic, I think that gave us a great opportunity to do, cre we had to be creative and we had to find ways. And so one of my favorite things that we did during the pandemic um, was we did what were called cruise nights. And so we had this activity called Be the Light Cruise Night. And this is where our students and their parents signed up. They were given a Google map and there were 10 locations around town. You followed the map, you pulled up to a location, you got out of your car, you did a little short five or 10 minute activity. We uh, we made like little homemade uh, toys for the animal shelter. We made um, we made these really cool leatherworking dog tags for veterans to thank them. We did these little acts of kindness around town. And so um, normally our FFA activities or our, our class service activities could have a hundred students. Well, during the pandemic, that was not possible. And so with these students got out of their car, they did an activity from a distance, they jumped in their car and they drove off and we had kind of cheerleaders, people cheering them on from a distance as they did that. Um, as we come back from the pandemic, fortunately now we're doing things more in person, but I think it shows that that sense of community and that sense of working together, that can happen no matter what situation we're in. We just have to be creative in how we do it. Yeah, that is really creative. So, okay. So let me kind of get this straight. So you had like different locations and at each location, there was a different activity that um, a parent and a child could participate in. Yes. Wow. That is, that. that's really creative. Yeah. Wow. Um, I, yeah. So here is it. Here is what I say. So it is clear that you are truly passionate about career and technical education. And so two questions. One, where does that passion come from? And two, why is it that CTE or career and technical education is important to you? Okay. Uh, you know, we talk about giving back to other people. Um, I definitely think that that ties a lot to my parents and how they raised me and definitely uh, my faith and just that service orientation and, you know, with, of course, being an ag teacher within that element of CTE, our FFA motto ends with living to serve. Um, and so that's something that we try to live by. In terms of, of passion about CTE, I think this just highlights the fact that we want to teach students skills that they can use. And and I know I mentioned this earlier in the interview, but we want to we want to there needs to be skills that they can use today. I mean, we have, you know, my greenhouse class students make flyer baskets that they donate to teachers um, all around the school to show appreciation. Well, those students are learning those plant and soil hands-on technical skills now. And I hope that many of them have went on to be landscape architects or work in greenhouses. But today, they're not going to be that. Today, they're going to use that skill and brighten someone else's day. And so I think I'm really passionate about this because we're teaching kids skills that they can use right now, like in, in the short term, but also can give them a career path moving forward. I, I I think it's just awesome, you know, what you're doing with your students and just helping them to um, see the realization of, you know, what and how we need to be as people, right? And so I think that that's really awesome. And here's our last question. The last question is this, what part of being an ACTE member do you value most? And what would you say to someone who's considering becoming a member? I think the most important part to me is community. You know, I mean, there are, there are many struggles in being a teacher and especially a first year teacher. You feel like you're an island on your own and you feel like you're you're going to have to invent the wheel on your own and you're going to have to figure out ways to make an impact. And, and all these struggles that you did not know you were going to face. And for me, you know, the camaraderie of other teachers and getting to learn from other people. And as we mentioned earlier, stealing their ideas. I mean, we have ACT publications where we can look and see what other people in current technical education are doing that are working and why not use those ideas? They've been proven to be successful. And so I think this membership builds that connection because many of us are at our various schools, um, whether they're secondary or, or post-secondary, and we're at these locations and sometimes we're the only one that teaches that area and we fill in an island, we feel like we're by ourselves. And these organizations help bring us together and realize that we're all going through the same thing and here's some things we can use. And, and you're, you're so right, but I have to tell you this though, Robin, even the veteran teachers, 
<laughs> sometimes, you know, feel that too. So I, I think that, you know, the important piece is that, you know, as veteran teachers, you know, you you need that rejuvenation, right? And then as your new teachers, it's like, okay, so give me something, right? And I think when you bring the two together, like that's where the magic happens. And it's just an awesome thing, as you said. And and I just, I, you know, I, I love it. And, and I'm just, again, thrilled and happy that I have had the opportunity to have conversation with you and learn, you know, a lot more about you and what you do. And what you do is so amazing. And it is no wonder that you are our Carl Perkins um, Service Awards um winner this year. And so this is what I would like to do. I'd like to just give you a few minutes um, to give your closing remarks of anything that you would like to share with our career and technical education community um, that you would like for them to know. You know, I, I guess I would just close by saying what we all do is important and we're so diverse and there's so many areas that we teach, but you know, what we do is important. And I feel like we bring in so many students that sometimes don't have a place, even in a traditional classroom, a different thing. And, and we're making a difference and our students will surprise us and they will rise to the expectations that we set for them and let them lead and let them uh, make a difference. You know, use this, what we're teaching in class to make a difference in community because these students will step up and they'll thrive with those opportunities to serve. Yes, they sure will. Well, again, Robert, congratulations on being our Carl Perkins Community Service Award winner um, for this year. We look forward to seeing you at the next Vision Conference. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, just, just keep on shining and keep on doing what you do. And to you and your family, we wish you a happy, safe, and peaceful holiday season. Thank you very much. Same to you as well. All right. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye.